Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the InWin Commander 1200 watt power supply. What's included is the user's manual, a carry pouch for the modular leads, cable ties, a bag, four screws for mounting the power supply in the case, a power cord, and the power supply. The Commander line of power supplies are currently available in capacities ranging from 650 to 1500 watts. I'll be reviewing the 1200 watt model, which is more than enough power even for hardcore computer systems. Now how is this wattage determined? Well to understand that, you need to know what rails are. Rails are basically well-regulated transformers which convert domestic current into the voltages that your computer system can use. And there are essentially two different rails, the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail and the 12 volt rail. In this particular case, the approximate maximum peak output of the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is 180 watts and the 12 volt is 1188 watts, which is essentially how the wattage of this power supply is determined. The 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is responsible for the motherboard, memory, PCI cards and so on, while the 12 volt rail is responsible for the hard drives, optical drives, fans, CPU, video cards, etc. Also, some might be interested to know the peak amps on each rail. Well, the plus 3.3 volt and the plus 12 volt rails are both 30 amps each. And there are four plus 12 volt rails, the plus 12 volt 1 and 2, are 20 amps each and the plus 12 volt 3 and 4 are 36 amps each with a combined power of 99 amps. There are a couple of important things to remember when selecting a power supply. The first is wattage. Determine how much wattage you are going to require by the amount of hardware you will be installing. Generally speaking, a medium to high end gaming rig would require a 500 to 700 watt power supply. For a hardcore system, select a power supply that's around 800 watts. If, however, you are building an extreme gaming rig with a top of line, multiple video card setup with lots of other hardware, select a power supply that's 1000 watts or greater. Second, it should be at or above 80% efficient at typical load. The efficiency of this power supply varies from 80 to 84% depending on load. Third, it should meet the latest ATX and other current standards, environmental directives, over voltage, under voltage, and other protections. This power supply meets all current standards. Fourth, I'd recommend choosing a power supply that has APFC. APFC, or Active Power Factor Correction, is something that also assists the power supply in being more efficient and therefore stable under load. APFC basically reduces total harmonics, corrects input voltage, and allows for full input voltage range. Thankfully, this power supply has APFC. Fifth, there are three main certifications, AV+, NVIDIA SLI, and ATI Crossfire. Many of today's high-end power supplies meet one or more of these certifications. This power supply meets the AV+, and NVIDIA SLI certifications. Sixth, look for a power supply that uses Japanese capacitors. This ensures a much more reliable product than a power supply with low grade capacitors. This power supply uses Japanese industrial grade components including 105 degrees Celsius rated capacitors. Finally, get a power supply that has enough leads for your setup. Also consider a power supply that has a modular design because it reduces the cable mess inside the case. Let's have a closer look at this power supply. Since this is a high wattage power supply, it's long, so it might not fit in some mid-tower and most likely will not fit in home theater PC and small form factor cases. It has a green paint finish with a military theme and the housing is steel. Here's the power cable connection and the power switch. They include a temperature controlled quiet recessed 140 millimeter fan. So as the load increases, the hotter the inside of the power supply gets and the faster the fan spins. This fan and the honeycomb ventilation ensures that the inside of the power supply will remain cool in almost any environment. This power supply has lots of leads, but the motherboard leads are hardwired into the power supply and can't be removed. The remaining are sleeved modular leads, which is excellent because you only need the ones required for your particular setup, which reduces the cable mess and increases airflow inside the case. Also note that the modular lead connectors have removable caps, which looks great and prevents anything from being inserted accidentally. Finally, have a listen to the 140 millimeter fan.
If you're in the market for a high wattage power supply, I would keep this one at the very top of your list because it looks great, has a very quiet 140 millimeter fan, is modular and efficient. Overall, this is a 100% kick-ass product. Until next time, take care.